Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel, among other things, are review listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Line Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that pop up, make sure sellers are disclosing everything, at least so we can tell. And then also, just I'm a Line Cruiser enthusiast, and you know, I think this discussion can help you know put you in a better position you know if you're in the market to buy one. And it's also fun just to talk about them. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the vehicle that we're going to study today, which is this 2011 uh, Lexus LX570, uh, mostly unmodified mostly Texas owned and yeah we'll go through the details here so it has got 158,000 miles located in or sorry it's got a clean Texas title uh, but it's located in Wixom Michigan and yeah let's see nothing else it's uh, black onyx yeah it's just a black color uh, it's got the 20 inch wheels on it that are stock uh, but let's go through the description here uh, again Cars and bids, they generally kind of regurgitate a lot of uh, just kind of like the stock information, whereas cars or uh, bringing trailers more of like a, I don't know, a narrative. But uh, let's see. So it's was Texas owned until 2023. Uh, kind of interesting that it's in Michigan now. So we'll we'll see when the when the seller. um <clears throat> All right, so the attached Carfax history report notes that this LX was Texas owned until 2023. So I'm curious to see if the owner is different between Texas and Michigan, or if this Michigan proprietor <laughs> uh, went to Texas to pick it up. Uh, everything else seems pretty normal here. The only modification reported by the selling dealer is a window tint. And let's see, so there's just some information about the LX570. So this is going to have kind of the adjustable height control uh, hydraulic system that raises the vehicle up and down, makes it super smooth and super soft um yeah great um yeah very comfortable truck i actually had a 2009 lx570 and yeah enjoyed it a lot uh the 5.7 liter v8 the the 3 ur fe is a tremendous engine uh very smooth lots of power uh, but yeah, we've got, in addition to the active height control, uh, we've got adaptive variable suspension. I never, there's a little switch on the center console. I never really noticed like an actual difference between kind of like sport or comfort, but anyway, it's there. Let's see, everything else seems about normal. These are pretty well, um, you know, all standard. Uh, one thing that mine didn't have that kind of is an option for some of these years is, yeah, this kind of cooled compartment in the center console, like a little refrigerator in the center console. Mine didn't have that, which I actually preferred, just a little bit less complex. And um, it might have been nice sometimes, but, you know, it's not the end of the day. But everything else here seems, yeah, pretty standard besides the tinted windows. Uh, let's see. So known flaws that the attacks Carfax history report notes that this LX sustained minor damage to its front and right uh, front in April of 2014. So yeah, when it was like five ish years old or three ish years old, uh, it adds <clears throat> that minor damage is usually, so Carfax calls it, you know, dents, scratches on body, things that are minor of that nature. Uh, it's got some exterior chips and scratches, a ding on the passenger side rear door, a dent on the passenger side running board, and scratches on the driver's side front wheel, and we'll see those. Uh, somewhere on the outer front seat bolster and steering wheel, yeah, very, very normal stuff for, you know, 100 plus thousand miles on these uh, Lexuses. Let's see, recent service history, there's an invoice in the gallery that includes, oh, sorry, and the entries in the Carfax report. Uh, I highlight some of the details. So in 2013, the coolant was topped off. Okay, so that's, that mileage is, that's probably supposed to be 2023. Um, June 2023 at 158,000 miles, the coolant was topped off. Uh, you normally shouldn't need to top off the coolant. Maybe it would be required if the uh, radiator were replaced or maybe if the radiator had cracked. Uh, so that's going to be something that we're going to maybe uh, dig into a little bit. You shouldn't have to top off the coolant. Uh, also, another very common thing is uh, on these is having the water pump replaced at about this mileage. In July in 2019, the headlights and wipers were replaced, uh, so probably not associated with the accident. So that's a little curious. And those headlights assemble, uh, headlight assemblies, those are not cheap either. Um, they've got, I think they've got like the steering, you know, like as you, uh, you steer to the left, the lights will kind of point to the left. Uh, let's see. And then the selling dealer states that the engine oil has recently changed. So they really haven't done anything. And the seller purchases uh, LX earlier in 2023. So there is a video. So be sure to check that out. And let's see. Yeah, it looks like they've called out that <laughs> June 2013 there in that description. And yeah, it's currently bid up to 17,000. It's got three days left. So yeah, let's go ahead and look at the Carfax history. Uh, so yeah, we've got two 
Well, yeah. So interestingly, well, we didn't really talk about it. Just said Texas owned prior to 2023, and that's what this appears to be showing. Um, so it looks like whoever picks this up will be the third owner. And yeah, it looks like the selling dealer is a uh, an enterprising individual. Uh, but yeah, everything else here, just scanning through this, this all looks good. This is, you know, Texas history is going to probably fare pretty well for this. Uh, it's in the Lubbock area. So, um, you know, maybe sun damage, maybe like hail damage. Those are the things that I would be looking for. Not necessarily, you know, looking for like flood damage, things like that. Just, you know, it's not likely in that Lubbock area. Uh, let's see, but there's your accident to the front and the right. And yeah, sometimes if like an airbag goes off, it'll mention that. I don't see that being mentioned here. Uh, once we're through with this service history, we'll go ahead and type in like water pump, look at radiator, coolant, etc. Uh, but all that looks like it stayed in Lubbock uh, through what 127, 140. Yeah, so it looks like yeah Lubbock. Oh, interesting. So yeah, at 138,000 miles, 140,000 miles, it was still in Lubbock, all with that original owner. So they had it for almost 10 years, it looks like, and then it went to Pearland. Um, so like the Houston area in 2020 and yeah, it was kind of in that South, uh, Houston area, uh, through the last 20,000 miles. And then it went to, uh, Michigan. So we've got antifreeze coolant checked. Let me go ahead and put coolant in here. That's the only reference there. Radiator. So these are all common issues. Water pump, nothing there. Starter. So none of the, uh, kind of the common things are documented having been done here on the Carfax. So if you're interested in this, you definitely want to pull this up into uh, the Lexus owner's vehicle owner's system. Uh, so you can check out the, the history there. I do see a lot of like <laughs> maintenance being done by, you know, random, not random, but maybe not a Lexus dealer. Uh, some of it, but yeah, Alderson Enterprises looks like, you know, Alderson European Motors. Uh, so maybe some of the, uh, the maintenance is done at Lexus looks like, you know, maybe some through like the first, you know, I don't know, six years or so we're done, but you've got, yeah, I mean, even here, less than a hundred thousand miles, you got it being done at Alderson Enterprises, whatever that is. So, um, yeah, just something to, you know, pull that up into Lexus and see what, um, see what's there. When you throw this into Google, you do come up with an interesting result. Uh, it looks like this American Auto Center is who is selling it. Um, yeah, let's get the location. So the name of this, uh, seller on Cars and Bids is ML Highland, uh, yeah, we need to maybe figure out a way how to tie it to this American Auto Center. But what's interesting, they've got it listed on their website. They've got the price set to zero. The mileage was at 145. What's it at now? What's this saying? 158. Yeah, so this might be like an old listing. Does that make sense? When did this thing sell um, coming out of... Yeah, so the mileage was a little bit different. Uh yeah, so I don't this this American Auto Center and them having it listed doesn't really correspond to the first to the second owner. Um, in any case, yeah, you've got the mileage. Looks like everything else, you know, more or less matches. But yeah, zero price. I tried to plug this into Wayback Machine to see if it would provide a price, but I didn't see it. However, we do have when we plug this into Vehicle History, we do see uh, American Auto Centers being listed here. I'm actually going to Google this. I want to know where. Oh, I can probably just look on their website to see where this is at. Uh, let's see. Contact us. Uh, let's see. So they're in Houston, Texas. So maybe they're this, maybe they're this dealer here. Yeah. Maybe that makes sense. So yeah, it's right around here that, you know, maybe this was like listed for sale at some point. So, uh, let's see, looking at this vehicle history though, we see the photos, we see the same 20 inch wheels. Um, yeah, nothing really notable here. And then sometimes they have the price. So it looks like in 2020, so just before the pandemic started, uh, this was listed at 25,000, which hell, that's a, you know, that's a reasonable price with the hundred and, you know, 38,000 miles, you know, good, good price. Uh, let's see. So nothing else to show there. So let's go ahead and jump into the photos. All right. Looking here at the front, you know, let's keep in mind that this right front and front, you know, they, it did have an accident. Uh, yeah, not a lot of like noticeable fade on the plastic headlight housings. Um, that would make sense given both the accident and given, um, you know, them having been replaced, you would expect a little something, uh, for this, you know, being in Texas, uh, assuming it had been parked outside either during the day. Uh, I, I don't know really what's going on here. It looks like this bumper cover is kind of pulling away a little bit from the grill. That could be, you know, pretty normal. Um, the gaps here on the fenders between the hood. I mean, that all looks, that all looks fine. 
Um, yeah, more or less fine here looking at the front. Moving to the passenger side. Yeah, similar story. Um, with it being all black, it's kind of hard to get some of the details, but you know, nothing really jumping out at me there. Moving around here to the rear, that looks good. All right. Uh, yeah, good Good luck here. Kind of interesting the way that yeah, the camera's set. Uh, you can kind of see like the front wheel, but then you've got like the rear wheels. Kind of makes it look like super, super fat. Especially here, it's all just black, but uh, pretty good looking truck. I, I like the design on these LX570s. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's well done. All right, moving here to the driver's side. Yeah, where, so it looks very like uh, second gen or first gen Sequoia-ish up here on the front. And that, that kind of side profile always turned me off. This this didn't bother me so much, but yeah, just kind of the side profile. I feel like the uh, the 200 series Land Cruiser, yeah, looked a little bit better. But uh, yeah, good, good looking truck. Yeah, not really picking up much of the dents that they mentioned. Um, hopefully they'll show those. One interesting thing, the reverse lights here are not in the kind of like the what you'd call the tail lights. They're mounted here on either side of the license plate, which is kind of interesting. And then, yeah, the doors open, so that's cool. Uh, with it being in uh, in Michigan now and just barely being there, it's a you know hopefully a good sign for rust and yeah, this could represent an opportunity for somebody that's in you know the Rust Belt, Michigan, Wisconsin, Chicago, or you know Illinois, um, that they can you know pick up one that's relatively rust free without having to go all the way across the country. Uh, Going back to the idea that this thing's been in an accident here on this front corner, uh, this alignment here of the front fender versus the bumper, yeah, that's not lined up quite right. Uh, it felt like a bigger gap here. Looks like maybe it's the bottom part here is kind of tucked in uh, because when we get this angle, like that looks fine, but we know with that other angle that, yeah, this bottom piece is kind of tucked in. And you can kind of see that in that photo. But the paint looks good. You can see there's some yeah weird kind of defects or, you know, flex of something um, there in the hood. But you've got rock chips on the front, so it doesn't look like the accident, whatever happened, um, it, and yeah, unless they got these rock chips on since then, um, I mean, that seems like, you know, 100 and, you know, 50, 160,000 miles worth of rock chips, but same thing with the hood. Yeah, in interesting on... Yeah, on the accident history, not quite sure what to make of make of that. Could have just been something super small. A little scratch here on the driver side mirror. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing really jumping out at me. Looks looks pretty clean. Black's not my favorite color on these. Uh, it just kind of hides a lot of the subtle design things. If you go back to some of the other videos we talk about on the uh, on the two hundred series, it looks like there's a little something here on this lower tailgate. Could just be a bug. Um, but yeah, they've. The 200 series has a cool kind of like, you know, line that goes down that rear quarter panel and kind of stretches all the way to the front of the vehicle. But uh, with the black vehicle, it just kind of hides a little bit. Lots of either bugs or rock chips here on the passenger side of the mirror. Scratches on the front bumper. So, yeah, it makes you wonder if, yeah, all of this was replaced or what the nature of the uh, that Carfax damage was. So it looks like it was probably pretty minor. Uh, so this looks like it's on the hood. So yeah, be sure to take care of this and save yourself having a bigger uh, rust issue down the road. Just get some touch of paint on that, and not just you know put the touch of paint, but you know get down to the metal or the primer and yeah take care of that rust. Uh, another scratch there on the front uh, driver or pa let's see what passengers no that's the driver's side <laughs> driver's side corner. There's that side mirror again. And then just some yeah, weird scratches here on the front door. It kind of almost looks like a dog, but I don't think a dog would be able to get up that high. Could also be a dog like hanging out that front window. Um, I don't know, just kind of weird scratches there. There's That's on the back uh, passenger side, it looks like. A little scratch there on that fattest part and then a little chunk taken out of the rear bumper. More scratches, that's kind of interesting. All right, good good for them to yeah show some of those details. Uh, yeah, this alignment here on the uh, fender to the bumper on the driver's side that looks more normal. And yeah, we've got just some Michelin street tires. It looks good on these uh, 20 inch wheels. Yeah, if you're gonna cruise around the country, that's, that's probably the best way to do it. You're not gonna go off road. All right, moving to the interior. Yeah, it looks like some really significant um, yeah, wear going on on this left side of the steering wheel. At least from what I can tell here, the right side looks pretty good. But yeah, this this looks kind of funky. 
otherwise, carpets look good. They mentioned a little bit of wear on the driver bolster. I, I don't see a whole lot. It looks looks fine. Uh, these Lexus, the LX570 center consoles, they kind of like split. You can move um, one, you know, one armrest like forward and back relative to the other. Kind of a nice touch. Uh, second row looks pretty good. Uh, but yeah, 158,328 miles. Uh, this photo is taken with the engine running. Kind of a little bit of a high idle, but that might make sense since it's uh, only a little bit, it's a cold engine. But yeah, that seat looks pretty good. You can see like a little bit of what like, you know, yeah, where one one thing that you wouldn't want this to be is like having it been worn and then like repaired by you know somebody where they lay down some sort of like you know paint or some fabric or, or not fabric but some like putty or something yeah you wouldn't want that you'd want to really make sure that's a you know, like original leather without you know repair done on it i wouldn't mind that that wear you could also get like a seat cover to cover that up but yeah just some wear here on the sill plate Look, it looks looks pretty good overall. Uh, some wear here on the center console where somebody's elbow is resting, and then you know, just some like grime here on the center console on the passenger side. The carpets look good. Those controls all look fine. Uh, a little little bit of something here in the carpet, but yeah, it's pretty minor. Second row looks good. Nothing really notable there. Yeah, one thing I do like about these LX five seventies versus at least the earlier year um, Land Cruisers is yeah they've instead of having like the mesh yeah they've got kind of like a you know a hard pocket here I kind of like that look a little bit more. But yeah, these interiors are nice. They've you know, it's got like kind of like an Alcantara type fabric you know going you know up here like once you hit this kind of shoulder part. Um, yeah, it's very quiet and, and yeah nice interior. There's a detail shot of the steering wheel. This is kind of the same wear that you end up seeing on the uh, on the Land Cruiser steering wheels. I haven't really seen that on an LX570 until this point. Yeah, all that looks fine. Uh, it looks like that wear continues along on both sides of the steering wheel. So I don't know if there's somebody that you know wears you know rings because I don't I don't really see a lot of like wear on the on the wood parts that's kind of weird that it's just on the leather but you can see it here on the right side of the steering wheel as well and i wouldn't necessarily say that it was like sun damaged because again the the wood seems like it's in pretty good shape so interesting uh there's your center console you know it's got the nav system pretty much all of them had it uh you've got heated and ventilated seats uh there's your center diff locker Uh, not, not sure what this piece is here, <laughs> but yeah, it's got the center console, like the description said, yeah, that would be nice on road trips. And then yeah, you can see it definitely, it got a detail, but you can see that there's, you know, still some like grime and, and junk in there. It probably doesn't bother most people, but yeah, that stuff like grosses me out. So I always have to, when I buy a car, I've got to you know, clean that crap out of there. Yeah. And one interesting thing, I, I don't know. Yeah, if you can really see this in the video, but there's a little there's a little bit of a curve here in this little wood panel that's at the front of the console, at the bottom of kind of like the navigation stack. And I've seen it on a couple LX 570s already, and you can kind of see it here. So the door here curves right towards the front of the vehicle, so it's concave. But what ends up happening is the the wood panel that they put over the top of this it ends up uh, delaminating from the plastic so it looks like on the passenger side it's it's still stuck to it and so you'd have that nice kind of curve but yeah on this driver's side it looks like it's peeling away i think my lx570 i can't remember if it was both sides or not but yeah that had that had happened on mine but yeah the interior looks looks clean looks like it's been pretty well taken care of um doesn't look like the um yeah like the airbags popped or anything like that so whatever that accident was that was reported or the damage yeah seems pretty minor yeah uh, th third row looks good uh looking at the visors now yeah that looks clean headliner looks good i'm sure the center roof works fine uh little smudge and you know crap like that above these uh, these visors but you know whatever yeah, you can see here the difference between the yeah you know, the LX and the Land Cruiser. So like this panel right here is carpeted, um, 
on the on the LX 570 where it isn't on the Land Cruiser. Uh, just like little things like that, kind of yeah, you can tell it's a much nicer product. Um, anyway, third row looks good. Yeah, nothing really to shout out. Uh, let's see. So <laughs> probably because of what the roof rack, I'm guessing. Oh, or maybe the uh, like the infotainment center. Yeah, they reduced the payload by eight pounds. Uh, back to the condition of the seats. You can see some cracking here on the kind of like the, I don't know, the side bolster on the seat. Just get, you got to keep some, you know, conditioner and keep that leather uh, yeah, soft and moisturized. That sounded gross. All right, second row. There's there's actually tons of photos here. This is pretty impressive for a uh, uh, for a cars and bids listing. Uh, door card looks good. Yeah, another difference. One of the things I point out commonly on the Land Cruiser 200 Series Land Cruiser, they've got kind of like this cheap plastic um, arm grab, you know, here or hand grab hand bar, and that plastic is not molded in color. It's you know painted that silver and yeah that silver wears off. Whereas here on the Lexus, yeah, you get leather. Just a much nicer finish. Let's see. I was trying to figure out. So I've been fooled by these little caps before. This this is uh, a Toyota, you know, from the factory thing. This could just be a dimple in the middle. I'm I'm keeping my eye out for paintless dent repair. Although, yeah, that looks like paintless dent repair was done on that door. Yeah, I don't I don't think paintless dent repair bothers other people as much as it bothers me. But yeah, I really don't like them. Yeah, drilling into the door jams. But it looks like that was done here. Everything else there on that door card looks good. Uh, maybe another paintless dent repair done here on the uh, rear driver's side door. Although there's a similar um, little cap here on the passenger door. So that might be Toyota too. I, I just can't remember. Or, or they just had PDR done all over the vehicle. I don't know. All right, moving here to the back. Yeah, that looks clean. That that uh that wood trim that they put on that rear center console, yeah, it looks really out of place <laughs> when it's folded up. Yeah, and the difference here between the Land Cruiser and the LX570 is that, yeah, these seats are all motorized. There's a little panel here just out of the frame of the photo that moves those up and down. You can see it right here in this photo. But yeah, I, def I probably would have uh, yeah, retracted the seatbelt. There's a little spot in the ceiling where you can tuck that seatbelt in and get it out of the way. Yeah, that rear cargo area, that looks, yeah, minty. It's nice. Yeah, nothing nothing really to point out here. It's got the full toolkit. Looks like, you know, looks like it wasn't used. And then, yeah, moving to the engine bay here. Yeah, nothing. There's so much plastic here. Yeah, not a whole lot to, uh, yeah, to point out yet. Hopefully that we get a photo with uh, yeah, the other plastic out of the way. Here's to hoping, right? Uh, moving to the undercarriage, uh, it looks nice and dry here. You're looking from the forward or from the front, looking to the back. A little bit of corrosion here, but yeah, nothing, you know, nothing to write home uh, about. Looks like it did spend a little bit of time uh, in in the winter in Michigan. I'd say probably just one. Uh, you can start to see some of the corrosion, you know, starting on some of these fasteners. But um, yeah, just if you buy this and you stay in a rust place, just get it, you know, put lanolin in or get fluid film or you know, spray oil all over the bottom of it. Just protect your, your investment there. There was, this is a while back, but somebody, uh, yeah, somebody, I think it was on like, I hate mud. They were giving me and others some crap saying like, you know, rust isn't that big a deal. Uh, you know, rust doesn't affect, you know, the, like the quality or the strength of the vehicle. And like, yeah, when you see like spring perches rusted out or, you know, other like the, the, you know, the frame having holes in it. Yeah, it certainly can. And it makes it a lot harder to work on. So uh, anyway, just spend your money, protect your, yeah, protect your, uh, your quote investment here. Not sure why this uh, book's all chewed up. Looks like a dog got a, got a hold of it. Same thing with those headphones. <laughs> At least they're there. All right. You got labels, etchings, little sticker. Yeah. A little bit of fade here on the seatbelt receiver, but you not. I don't know, not enough to think that it was parked outside a lot. Yeah, this is this is pretty clean. Yeah, so if you were if you were, you know, in this in, in this area in Michigan and you were looking for one and you didn't want to go either to you know like the south or to the west coast, yeah, this this would be a good opportunity to pick one up. Hopefully, it doesn't go too much. Um, so my data point on this is what uh, about a year ago. Uh, yeah, a year ago is right. 
Uh, so the 2009, it had a hundred and like 6,000 miles and sold it for like 30 grand. Um, so I would hope that this wouldn't go over 30 grand. Sure. It is two years newer, but functionally no difference. And it's got a lot more mileage. Uh, mine was also the Costa Azul Mica. Uh, it's kind of that, you know, like nice light blue color. I know it's a little bit more attractive than the black in my opinion, but, um, yeah, I think the black's just gonna, you know, it's gonna bland. In any case, uh, yeah, this has got a little bit more room to run. Uh, would love to see this not go over 25. And think of that 25 being the price that this was back in, you know, with 140,000 miles in 2020, um, you know, being sold for 25 grand. I'd love to see it go for that same price. That would be fantastic. Anyway, so that's yeah, neither here nor there. Uh, Price-wise on this, I, I think... I would expect a, a very, you know, like a similarly specced Land Cruiser 2011, same mileage, to be like, I don't know, 35 or so. Um, I would hope to see this stay less than 30. Um, would love to see you know, like a mid to high 20. So I'm going to uh, put my put my number with my hopes <laughs> instead of what I think will probably happen. And yeah, let's go with uh, 26, uh, 26,000. That's, yeah, that's, that's, where I th that's where I think it'll go, or I hope it'll go rather. But anyway, yeah, good looking truck. Um, yeah, if you're interested in bidding this one, I'm curious. This this seems like a very, you know, like reasonable, if you want to get into 200 series, this could be a, you know, pretty reasonable opportunity. Although keep in mind, like the radiator, the water pump, we don't have record of any of that being done. So uh, maybe it's in the Lexus system, but definitely want to verify that because yeah, you might have to spend some, yeah, pretty good money. Same thing with doing like an AHC uh, flush that'll, you know, be something you need to keep your eye on as well as, yeah, making sure it's all, you know, kind of baselined and ready to go. Make sure, you know, the, the um, yeah, your gear oil is up to, up to stuff. Same thing with your transmission and just staying on top of all that remember fluids are cheap so all right there you go thanks for watching this one uh thanks for checking out the channel and yeah i hope you have a good day see ya